Hello class, in this video we will be covering 7.8 credit cards and in this section there are five problems. So for number one it says the credit card with transactions described on the right uses the average daily balance method to calculate interest. The monthly interest rate is 2.5 percent of the average daily balance. Calculate parts A through D using the statement on the right. Okay. So for the first one, it says, find the average daily balance for the billing period round to the nearest cent. Now I do have a formula over here and it tells us the sum of the unpaid balances for each day in the billing cycle divided by the number of days in the billing cycle. So in order to find that information, I actually have to extend my table and come up with some more values, okay? So first thing I do is I start off with the previous balance. That is my unpaid balance, okay? And since, you know, this happens before the billing date or on billing date, whatever you want to call that, um, that is what I'm starting with at that point. So from day one to day five, that's one, um, day two, three, four, five, that's going to be four days that I have this balance, okay? Because on day five, the something's changing, okay? So for four days, for March 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, this is the amount that was my balance each of those four days. So that's four days. So I multiply these, and that is the total balance for those four days if you add up each daily balance, okay? Then... What we have on March 5th is a payment that occurred of $400. So I took this value and I subtracted that $400 and this is how much my unpaid balance is on March 5th. Now on March 5th and March 6th, nothing changed. So those two days that that was my um, balance, my unpaid balance. So this amount times two is where this value came from. Then on March 7th, uh, we have a charge at a restaurant. So this is going to add to my unpaid balance. So I took 5860 and I added $40. And then on March 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, okay? Or no, 12th, it changed. So for five days, I had this as my balance. So then 5,900 times five days is this value. Then from there on the 12th, I got, I charged $100 for groceries. So that caused my unpaid balance to go to 6,000. And it stayed 6,000 on March 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So for nine days. On the 21st, the balance changed. Okay, so that's why there's nine there. This product is this value. Then on the last day, or on the 21st, it changed. And so it was $270 for car repairs. So I added that to the previous unpaid balance. And then March 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then 31 days, it stayed at that balance. So that was 11 days that it stayed at that balance. Um, so then this product gave me this. So what I did is I added up all the number of days. It's 31. It makes sense because there was 31 days in the billing period. And then if I add up all these products, I end up with this value. So this is the sum of the unpaid balances for every single day of the 31 days. Okay. And I divide that by the 31 uh, day pay period. And I got this amount rounded to the nearest cent. Now, for part B, it says, find the interest to be paid on April 1st, the next billing date, round to the nearest cent. So remember, and this isn't even really the correct formula. I don't even know why I wrote that in there, but it tells us here that the monthly interest rate is 2.5% of the average daily balance. So if I do 2.5% times, oops, 2.5% times 614.19, 6014, no, wrong, 
6104.19. Now that looks right. Um, and I get this value rounded to the nearest cent is 152.60, which is what we had there. Now it says, find the balance due on April 1st. So that means my unpaid balance as of March 31st plus my interest, right? Because that's going to add to what I owe. So my last balance on March 31st was 6270 plus the amount of interest that I'm going to have to pay means that this is going to be my total unpaid balance for the new um, um, pay period. Now, part D says, this credit card requires a $10 minimum monthly payment if the balance due at the end of the billing period is less than $360. Well, this is the amount that's due at the end of the pay period, and that is not less than $360. So it says, otherwise, the minimum monthly payment is one over 36 of the balance due at the end of the billing period. Since mine was not less than $360, I'm taking the amount due times one over 36. Calculator told me this, but it did say round up to the nearest dollar. So that four does make it go up to 179. So 179 is going to be my minimum payment because of the amount that I owe. Okay, number two. So number two says the credit card with the trans transaction described in the pop-up below, and the pop-up comes down here at the bottom, um, uses the average daily balance method to calculate interest. The monthly interest rate is 1.6% of the average daily balance. Calculate parts A through D using the statement in the pop-up. So it's literally the exact same thing that we just did, but with different numbers, different scenario, right? So let's go for it. So in order for me to do this average daily balance, I do have to fix, complete my chart, okay? And I added this date column here, which I don't necessarily need, but I put it in there. So on June 1st, I had this as my previous balance and there were five days, June 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So five days that I had this as my balance. So I take that product and that's, the sum of those five days, okay? Then um, on June 6th, we had a payment. So I took this, I took that previous balance and I subtracted $1,100 from it because that's how much credit I got on June 6th. So, but it stayed like that only on June 6th and June 7th. So this was my unpaid balance on June 6th and June 7th, which was two days. So if I added that up for those two days, this is the amount that you would get. Then on June 8th, we had a charge for gas. So I took this and I'm adding more to my balance. So I added the 3484. This is now my unpaid balance. But since the balance changes again on the 9, it's only for that June 8th date. So it's the same amount. June 9th, we had another charge of 136.65. So I took the previous balance, added 136.65, and ended up with this new unpaid balance. And it stayed like that on June 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And so that is eight days. So I multiplied these two together and that gives me the sum of the unpaid balance for those eight days. Then on June 17th, it changed. I had another charge. So I took the previous balance plus 4164 and I got this. Um, oh no, there were two charges. So I actually had to add both of these amounts. So I took the unpaid balance from June 9th and I added 41.64 and I added 128.09. And that gave me with this unpaid balance on June 17th. And it stayed like that, the 17th, 18th, 19th, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. That was 10 days it stayed at that balance. So I took this product and that is the sum of the unpaid balance for those 10 days. Then on June 27th, I got another charge. So I took the previous balance and I added that charge to it and I got this amount of my unpaid balance. And then it stayed like that until the 30th. So it stayed like that on the 27th, the 28th, the 29th, and the 30th. So for four days. 
So I multiplied that together and that is the sum of the unpaid balance for those four days. So I added up all the number of days, which is 30, and it makes sense because the billing cycle was 30 days. And I added up all of these products, which would give me the complete total sum for all 30 days. So then what we did was we took that total sum, okay, which was this value, and we divided it by the 30 days. So the total sum divided by the 30 days came out to this amount. So this is the average daily balance for the whole bailing period. Then it says find the interest to be paid. So it's that um, average daily balance times the percentage that they told me, which was 1.6%. And that gave me this, I rounded it to the nearest cent. And so I got 31.45. So you're only gonna get charged $31.45 for interest. So you take your last unpaid balance, which was this amount, that was my last unpaid balance, plus the amount of interest that I'm gonna have to pay. And together that means that this is going to be my new balance on the next pay period. That's gonna be my starting point on the next pay period. Now it says the credit card requires a $30 minimum monthly payment if the balance due at the end of the billing period is less than $400. However, this is my balance at the end of the billing period and that is not less than $400. So then what I need to do is I need to take one over 25 of the balance due at the end of the billing period. So one over 25 times the balance due at the end of the billing period. I put this in the calculator and it gave me this and it said to round up. So that means that that three, even though it's not a five or more, does still make this round up to 86. And that was the value that we put in there. Now, number three is not as extensive as number one and number two. Number three says your credit card has a balance of $2,600 and an annual interest rate of 18%. You decide to pay off the balance over two years. If there are no further purchases charged to the card, A, how much must you pay each month? And B, how much total interest will you pay? So if this is my balance, I'm going to multiply it by my 18% compounded monthly, my 1 minus 1 plus 18% over 12, raised to the power of negative 12 times 2 for the two years. All of this in the calculator, rounded to the nearest dollar, was $130. So I took my $130, that's my monthly payment, $100 monthly payment times 12 months per year times two years gives me this amount paid. Minus this amount um, for my balance, which means that I actually paid $520 of interest. Okay, number four, we're back to this stuff again. So, but this one is like number one and number two. I really think that number four and number five, because I think number five is the same. Yeah. Number four, number five really should be number one and number two, just because they help you lay everything out better than number one and number two did. So it's literally the same problem as number one and number two. Um, so we're gonna go for it. It's just a repeat of that same process. So it says um, the credit card with the transactions described on the right uses the average daily balance method to calculate interest. The monthly interest rate is 1.5% of the average daily balance. Complete the chart below and calculate parts A and B using the statement on the right. So for October 1st, this is my unpaid balance, okay? Um, and it stays like that on October 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th because the change occurs on the 5th, right? So it's four days. Then that change included a $350 credit. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take away from my unpaid balance. So I took this and I took away $350. That left me with this new unpaid balance. And that unpaid balance stayed for October 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th, another four days. Then from there on October 9th, we had a charge for $40. So that's gonna add to my balance which means this is now my new balance. And on October 9th, that means 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 
14. So that's going to be six days. Because on the 15th, it changed, right? And it changed by another charge for $90. So that gives me my new balance. And how long do I keep that balance? The 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Because on the 21st, it changes. So that's another six. Then this balance is going to change because I'm going to have another charge of $220. So now this is my new balance. And that new balance is going to be on the 20, I don't have room, the 21st, 22nd, 28, 29, or I'm sorry, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, 30, and then the 31. And so that one, that balance stayed for, thir for 11 days. When you add up all the number of days, it equals 31, and it should because there were 31 days in this billing period. Now, if this was the balance for all four days, instead of adding 6240 four times, you can just multiply that and get the value, the product. Multiply these, get that value. Multiply these, get that value. Multiply these, get that value. Multiply these, you get this value. Then you add up all of these values, and this gives you the unpaid balance sum for all 31 days. You take that sum and you divide it by the 31 days and this gives you your average daily balance, okay? And so I rounded it to the nearest cent and it, I did type it in the box. Then it says find the balance due on November 1st. Remember, you have to pay interest. You pay your, un, your average um, daily balance times 1.5%, which is this amount of interest. So my last unpaid balance amount, my last unpaid balance amount, plus the amount of interest I have to pay, this is going to be my total um, previous balance at the beginning of the next billing period. And again, this is if you're not including the payment before the next billing period starts. Um, okay, moving on to number five. Number five is very similar. So we have different transactions, but the process is still the same. Um, and it is still 1.5% here, like in the last example. Make sure you pay attention to what percent because they do change it on you sometimes. So we started off with uh, 6,310 on April 1st. Then um, for April 1st, April 2nd, before April 3rd, a change. Okay, so for two days, there was no change. This was my previous, my unpaid balance for those two days. Then April 3rd, something happened. I made a payment. So I'm going to subtract 350 to get my new balance. And it's going to stay like that on the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. Because on the 11th, there's a change. So for eight days, this is the daily balance. Then on the 11th, we had a charge of $30 at a restaurant. So that means I'm going to add to my unpaid balance. And that's how I got this value. Now, how long does it stay like that? The 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. So for five days. Then on the 16th, we had a change of $80. So we're going to add that to our balance, our unpaid balance. And we get this amount. And how long did it stay that amount? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Oh, 22, it changed. So for only six days, we have that as our daily balance. Then um, we had another change on the 22nd, which was another charge of $220, which gives me a daily balance of now this. And how long was it like that? The, the 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 days. So, because it ended on 30, on the 30th. So that is nine days at that amount. So if I want the sum for these two days, you multiply that. If I want the sum of the daily balance for these eight days, multiply those. The sum of the balance, unpaid balance for these five days, multiply those. The sum of the balance for these six days, multiply these. And then the sum of the unpaid balance for these nine days, multiply these. Then if I want the total sum, you have to add up all of those. These should add up to 30 because the billing day, the billing period was 30 days. So you take the total divided by the 30 day period and you get this amount as your average daily balance. 
if you want to know how much money you need to pay on the, you know, that's going to be owed at the beginning of the next billing cycle, you're going to take your average daily balance times the 1.5%, and that gives you the amount of interest that you have to pay. So you're going to take your last balance, which was this amount, and you're going to add your interest. And this is going to be your new balance. And so that's the amount that they want there. And that is the end of this particular section. Not only is it the end of this section, but this is also the last section included in the third unit. So the next video I will, you will be seeing is the test three review. Um, and we'll talk about that one in the next video.